Hello traders everywhere, Adam Hewison here. Hello traders everywhere, Adam Hewison here, co-founder of Market Club with your midday market update for Friday the 7th of October. It's Friday, it's the end of the week and here we are with markets that have made a remarkable recovery in the last several days from the lowest scene. As we discussed yesterday, has this market put in a bottom? Well, unless it's a complete breakdown this afternoon, it would appear as if the markets will close higher for the week. Cycle-wise, if we close lower today in the equity markets and in the crude oil, it would appear that we have put in an interim top in both of those markets. Let's do a reality check. Have any of the problems in the Europe gone away? Has all the uncertainty about the doubt and banks of this country with the foreclosures mortgage problems gone away? No, they still exist. And the longer term trends in the markets continue to be negative. I could add the situation hasn't been helped by the folks in the White House and Congress, but I'm sure you already know that. But look at Citi, look at Bank of America. Closing down at these levels be new low weekly close for these markets. That's not the sign of a bull market or a turnaround. It's still very negative. I would say that the two markets mentioned earlier closed lower today. The odds are you want to maintain any short positions you have and possibly add to those positions. We'll be looking to, at the charts to get a clearer picture to see exactly what's going on. We're going to be doing something a little different today. You're on my home page, obviously. You can see that. But we're also being talking about uh, stocks that are making 52-week highs and stocks that are making 52-week lows. We have a specific rule to trade those markets. You need to go to our blog to read about that rule. But let's just go to take a look at our portfolio manager. I've already set these stocks up. So I'm going here now and I'm going to go right to my portfolio manager. And the stocks we're talking about is Cellfan right here. And I'll click on that and you can see this market made a new 52 week high. Uh, it's a daily chart you can see. Looks very, very good to us. You can see our monthly kicked in right here at 80.80. It's 81.20, not, not a lot above that, but it's a very tight stock and you can see all our triangles are high. Now, if the market close, closes at or close to its highs today, the rule is you want to be long this market, then take profits on Monday or Tuesday. Now, remember, this is bucking the trend, it seems to me, but the trend is clearly up in this stock, and the stock market's made up of stocks, uh, not just one index. So let's go to our next market. The next market we're going to be looking at is Seattle Genetics. And as you can see also on this chart, which will come up. You can see we made a new high. Now, this has come off from the highs, and I would say I'd be a little susceptible on this, but a little concerned about this one. I only want to buy it if it really closes towards the high of the day. And the high of the day today is 22.37, uh, so about 60 cents from here. If it closes right towards the high, I think it's a good chance that we're going to see the higher, this market higher on Monday and Tuesday. So take a look at that one. I think it's kind of interesting. Next market we're going to look at, uh, market's making 52-week lows, and that's the UNG, which is the United States natural gas market. And this is not acting very well. Uh, you can see we're down here. Now it's an ETF, so maybe a little bit harder to uh, to short, but you can certainly go to our website. You'll see, we'll see, give you the equivalent of those ETFs you can short this market on. So let's go to our next market, and the next market we're looking at is Illumina. And this is, you can see, minus 100. Uh, you can see quite clearly these are very clearly marked as downtrends with our scoring system. And Illumina, the symbol is ILMN. You can see it's not closing well today. I would say if it closes down here, you want to be short for the weekend. Now, a lot of traders will say to myself, oh my God, the market's come down so much, I don't want to short it right here. Well, the odds are you do want to short it because that's weakness. You want to sell weakness and buy strength. These are the type of markets that plays very well into it, that kind of picture. So just check those markets out on the weekend and take a look at them on Monday and Tuesday when they open up. So let's go to our major markets that we track every day, and that's the S&P 500 cash. Uh, it's down today, uh, which is exactly what we expected, and I'll show you why. And if you look at our trade triangles, monthly, weekly, negative, daily, positive, minus 85, strong downtrend. And I'm going to put my Telestrator on here because I want to show you some of the things I'm looking at which I think may be helpful to you. So first of all, you have to look at how this market has been acting over the, since August. We have this sort of move up here, move up here. Do you see a pattern here? And look at the look at the lows, lower, lower, lower. This is lower than this here. So again, you're seeing this downward trend, 
And the market closed last week. We closed in the S&P 500 at 11.31. Now, the market's at 11.55. A lot can happen towards the end of the day in these markets, as you well know. But we closed at 11.31 last Friday, and certainly we're higher for the week. And this is what I was mentioning to you earlier. We are higher, but the trend, in my opinion, is still negative for this index. So let's take everything off the screen and go to our next market. And the next market we're going to be looking at is silver. Silver is really kind of disappointing. I think a lot of people are disappointed this market hasn't really gone anywhere. And it really hasn't gone anywhere. If you just look at the trend, the trend here is sideways, 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 boring, boring, boring. So what do you do in a situation like that? Well, it is minus 85. The monthly and the weekly trade triangles are telling you the trend is down. Now, isn't that refreshing to know? You don't have to guess. You don't have to figure out. You don't have to listen to talking heads. Go with the market action. It is a positive in terms of telling you what the market wants to do. Now, we were saying on our blog, we could see silver going back to $20 an ounce. Now, why do I say that? Well, it's possible with the slowdown in the economy, also, if we see the S&P 500, which we just talked about, go to 1,000, which we think it's possible if we see a close under 1120, we can see this market go much, much lower. Again, it, it's possible. We're just sort of basing out here. But probably wise, I don't see a lot of enthusiasm to be a buyer of silver right at this moment. So near term, short term, very short term. It looks like it's maybe made a turn, but uh, I, I wouldn't hang my hat on that just for the moment. I want to see more evidence, and I think that'll be more forthcoming next week. Now, the next big market we're going to look at, and we look at the big markets, we, we consider these the big markets like stocks, precious metals, energy, inflation. We look at all these things. Now, here again, this is the gold market, and the only difference between the gold market and the silver market is this, and I'll show it to you real quickly is the fact that in the gold market you have a monthly green trade triangle, whereas in the silver market it's a red triangle. So again, this is the only positive right now, but you can see you can just draw a very simple line. This market really hasn't gone anywhere. It's beginning to look as though it's trying to base out, but it's still too early to tell. Certainly the long-term trend you have to say is still positive. If you one goes back, you can see the longer-term trend is moving higher. This is just a pullback. Um, but again, I think it's still too early to tell what exactly is going on in this market. So I'd be very, very careful uh, about jumping in and buying this market. Last week, uh, I think we closed last week at uh, 1623. We're 1629. Barely changed for the week, $6, which is, which is the kind of market uh, we've been seeing. That's nothing. That's uh, just nothing at all. So we could still close at 1623. So Let's see how, the, how that plays out. So let's clear the screen and go to our next market. And the next market we're looking at is going to be the crude oil market. Now, this is a really interesting market. And this is where I really want to sh show you how this is tied into the equity markets. Uh, again, uh, we had, I'll um, put my illustrator on. Again, you can see the pattern quite clearly here. Uh, we had the here, here, here. If we close down here like this somewhere today, uh, I think below 82, I think that's the no number we're looking at, I would say this would be very, very negative. Now, we closed last week around $79 a barrel, uh, which is right around these levels. Uh, but really, you know, you, you can expect counter trend rallies in the markets that just keeps, keeps getting pummeled because people, the people who are short, uh, may have got too short at the bottom, cover their shorts. Uh, bulls make great bears and bears make great bulls. They have to cover their position. So I think you want to look at this market on the longer term. And the longer term indicates to me if the economy is going to go south, uh, which I think it still can based on our technical analysis, is that uh, there's no reason why this market, the crude oil market, can't go to uh, check $75 and then down to $70. I, w I would not be surprised to see another pull back to 75, which is the recent lows we saw right around here, and possibly down to the 70 level. So I think you really want to pay close attention. Don't get 
married to this commodity boom type thing, it changes, and that's the big thing. We've had a tremendous amount of money. I think it's like $34 billion came out of the commodity markets last month or last quarter. Huge, huge amount of money. And you've got tools now. You've got ETFs. You can trade these markets from the short side. And I think the ETF on this is DTO, uh, just off the top of my head. But certainly you can get short markets by going to inverse ETFs. So we have that on our website. And you can very easily find out which ETFs you can use to go short uh, in an IRA account or even a 401k account. So again, with this, you're looking at the DTO to short it, which is a leveraged uh, ETF, or you could just go short the ETF, uh, just short the ETF USO. Uh, you can actually short ETFs. So let's go clean the screen up and go to our next market. And lots going on. Really, this is a big, big day in the market. So you really want to pay close, close attention. So let me just clear everything off the screen. Go to our next market. Next market we're looking at is the dollar index. And as you know, we've been friendly to this market. It's still a plus 85. We've had the pullback, which we expected. We came back to the middle part of the range. Uh, this, to me, is a natural pullback, just like this was a natural pullback, and this was a natural pullback. As you know, uh, we got long this market very, very well, right around the 76.10 when it broke out. And just to draw that on the screen, uh, we are still friendly to this market. So here was the original breakout point in terms of what we were talking about on our website. And it's just right here, and you can just go run across like that. It was 76.10, which we alerted everybody who watches these updates uh, that the market was going higher. Of course, the market went up, tested the support again. There, this, was for, this was resistance. And when the market comes back, this is now support. Resistance turns into support. So, And we steadily sort of moved up. You can see right here. And we've had this pullback today. I think if we close here, uh, I think we'll see this market do better next week. Last week, we closed on the dollar index at 78.79 with 78.73 practically unchanged for the week, which is remarkable uh, how steady the dollar has been. And remember, everybody was saying the dollar was bearish, 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 and they've just been wrong, wrong, wrong. And this gets back to listening to what the market's telling you and go with that trend. So let's clear the screen off and go to our next market. And the next market is going to be the CRB, uh, Reuters Jeffries CRB index. I've been calling it CRB index for a long, long time. Uh, as you may recall in yesterday's um, blog and posting, we said the, the 304 area was going to be a resistance. And of course, that has proven to be true. We're closing down. And look at the similarity here. You've got, this is where I think, this is what makes the market so beautiful and symmetrical if you pay really close attention to it. So here we had the we had the rally turn down. We've had the rally and we're turning down again. So I think we're going to test the 295 level, uh, which is a Fibonacci 61.8% retracement. We talk about these Fibonacci retracements all the time and they are very, very powerful. You just don't want to ignore them. And it's very easy to do that with Market Club is to use the Fibonacci tool. We show you how to use it. We have videos on the site about how to use it. And um, it's just very easy. And I think what you want to look at, and if we take this out, you'll see exactly what we were talking about in terms of the Fibonacci. So let's just go out to, uh, let me just go back up here. We'll go out, uh, let's say, uh, two years. And we'll just put a line chart on. Let's take off the Donchian trade channels, which I think are very useful, developed by Dick Donchian in the 40s. So they've been around for you know, almost 60 years. Very, very powerful. I'll take the parabolic off. And all we, all we left with is just a pure price action. I'll even take the uh, trade triangles off. You can see the trade triangle got short at 335. Uh, nice 10% move there, non-leverage. You can see we've got long at 278. So huge move. We caught the big move. We caught the move down. You should really look at these trade triangles. They're very, very useful. And let's go to um, put the Fibonacci tool on. It's right here. And you simply click on the highs, drag it down to the lows, and bingo, look where it stopped. 61.8, it's, it's 294.89, which is where the market actually traded. So again, very, very useful tool for you to use. Uh, watch the markets carefully today. I'll be back this weekend with a wrap-up for the weekend. We'll look at some other things. But generally speaking, 
pay close attention to the markets today. It's a big, big day in the markets. You've got a lot of people who thought the market was putting in the bottom. We're not one of them. We think the market's still in a downward trend, and that's the way to trade. Hey, I'm Adam Hewison for Market Club. I'll see you tomorrow with the weekend wrap. Have a great trading day. I'll see you then.